Right, picture the scene. It's a hot and humid August. The day, Sunday the 2nd of August, 1992. Temperatures are so high, Europe is getting an absolute battering from the summer sun. River levels are dropping as a result. Ice cream sales are at record highs and usage of hose pipes completely banned. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Well, perhaps not. Unless, of course, you were 23 hours into a 24 hour endurance race, such as the legendary 24 hours of Spa. This car, the BMW Fina Bastos E30 M3, is being driven by Christian Danner, Jean Michel Martin, and Steve Soper, and it's doing its damn best to get a podium finish. So far in the race, due to the soaring temperatures, a race favourite, the R32 Nismo Team Nissan GTR, bursts into flames mid pit stop, engulfing team mechanics and nearby marshals, and thus bringing the Nismo's drive to an end. Then, in the early hours, a dramatic storm front blows in, with cascades of rain lifting the scorched rubber from the tarmac and creating ice-like slippery driving conditions. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it claims a few cars in its wake. Soper, caught up in the chaos, has a coming together with a back marker, causing him to pit for a quick repair, but at a high cost. He's now a lap behind and opts to rest, swapping out the drive with Belgian teammate Jean-Michel Martin. For the final stint of the race, Soper is back in the driver's seat for one last fight to the end. His competition ahead, fellow BMW driver Eric van der Poel. With less than an hour on the clock, van der Poel is exhausted and losing seconds per lap as a result. Soper decides to push. Van der Poel gets the order of attack from the pit wall, but it's too late. He's hit his limit and Soper capitalises on an opportunity to pass. Soper crosses the line in first place with a lead of just 0.48 seconds, taking the win for the BMW Fina Bastos E30 M3. So, I should probably reveal at this point that this isn't the 1992 winning Spa 24-hour car. It's a recreation, but it's still worthy of a walk around and worthy of a talk because it happens to be driven by the one and only Steve Soper. Let's bring him in. Hello, Steve. How are you? So, I've revealed that this isn't our original 1992 Spa winning car. However, it's a beautiful recreation, but luckily you're not a recreation. You are the real Steve Soper, is that right? I'd like to be a recreation. <laughs> I'm a bit old now, but it'd uh, be nice to think they could do that one. Absolutely. So this is a special car, despite the fact that it's a recreation, because it is essentially a complete and utter replica of the car that you competed in and crucially won in, which is a race we should remind you, just in case you're unaware, is also a race that happened on the same weekend that your daughter was born. Yeah, Cassie Sopo, who's now 30, I don't know, one or two, was born on that same weekend. So yeah, it's a, the race is a special memory, the car is a special memory, and that's, as we've just said, we recreated it with this car. This car's brand new, completely nut and bolt, uh, rebuild to recreate that but every single part of this is exactly as the original car that um, I used to race in 92. Amazing. So this is a essentially it's a brand new well a refound shell that's been put together. How similar is this in terms of the car that you competed in? Is there anything modern anything changed in comparison to that car from the early 90s? Well just in case this someone who really knows what he's talking about and then writes into you and I <laughs> afterwards. The spec of this is DTM, yeah. 92 DTM, and the livery 
is SPA 24-hour livery. So the two specs of engine and gearbox were different. Got it. But the faster option is the DTM, but we like the livery, which is SPA. Perfect. So you heard it there. Before you comment and complain and go, it's not quite right, there's a reason, and we're living with it and we love it. <laughs> So on a day like today, we're at a test day today at Silverstone, ahead of some com competition that this car is going to be used for later in this year. Do you get any form of nostalgic memories when getting into a car like this, a car that you would have competed with back in the early 90s? Does it come back to you like hearing an old song or smelling an old smell? Unfortunately, no. Oh. <laughs> so I would be telling a lie. I, I love it. I enjoy it. I enjoy driving the car. I enjoy when we test, I enjoy when I coach Toby. Um, I enjoy it when we race, but it's a long time ago now, that car. So, yeah. so tell me then, what will this car be doing this year? What's it being built for? I think that the next test is at Alton Park. Then the next race is the end of the month, which is in at Donington. Great. Then we have a race at Brands Hatch. And then we have a race here, Silverstone Classics. And then the last, then there's another race at Brands Hatch. I think that's, there might be another race at the end of the year at Silverstone. I think that's about it. So there's probably five, six races. Busy old calendar. Between most of them I'm doing with Toby. I think the Brands Hatch one, I'm driving another car and he's driving this by himself without two. So two different championships. Now there's something you showed me very briefly on the uh, passenger side of the car, which I feel like we need to also show the camera and I'd like you to just talk me through it. So if I open up the door here. Well, it's, um, it's a plaque that we, we used to run a plaque in DTN that basically said your name, your car number, and the BMW team that you were driving for, and that was on a plaque. So we've we've modified that slightly, and we've put just things on it that we want. You know, BMW Fina Bastas, the first place in the 24 hour, my name, the car number. But at the bottom, we've got um, we've got what have I put? Tribute to the winning car and driver, Steve Soper, Christian Dano, John Michel Martin, and the date of birth of my daughter that was born on the 1st of August, 92, which was that weekend. Absolutely, which just to remind you, 1st of August, 1992, and the car won on the 2nd of August, 1992. So this man watched his daughter be born. The minute he was happy, you saw the band go on, you saw that it was definitely her, and you said, <laughs> okay, darling, I'm off to spa. Off you went and won the bloody race. Also, the the race start is a 24 hour race. So the race started on the first and yeah. finished on the second. Of course, yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was a memorable weekend. One that I think she's quite happy with as well. Good. Because she's very much a motorsport fan. Yeah. And follows all sorts of racing from MotoGP to Formula One to this. So she's, she's, she's a fan. The younger daughter also, Gabriella, who's a two years younger, is also a big motorsport fan. So. so the one thing I like when looking in cars of this period is they look beautifully simple, don't they? You look at a lot of yes. modern day racing cars and you've got screens and screens and screens. This is quite, uh, quite refreshing to see, isn't it? But, but again, even in 92, you know, we had data back then that we could look at all the data of ourselves against our teammates. And the same with this, if, you, if you've been watching, you know, they keep plugging laptops in, not just for the data, but for the engine to see what all the boundaries are and the temperatures and gravity and everything. So even 30 years ago, it was data. Uh, today, there's an awful lot, you know, modern, there's so many different channels of data you can't believe. Yeah. Um, but, you know, back then, it, uh, there was a certain amount of data, but they are simple compared to, you know, now you've got obviously paddles on the gear, on the, you know, on the gearbox, on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. um, whereas we've got a, it's a, it's a six speed H, you know, through the ring, it's not even a se sequential. 
Um, it's a dog ring box, which um, is quicker, but it's quite aggressive to drive. But the rest of it's simple. And not much in the way of luxuries either. So the other thing that I know was a, a, a poignant point to that 1992 24-hour race is it was unusually hot that year. It was very, very warm. So can you remember what sort of... Uh, what it was like driving this around. Can you remember it Well, being... I remember, I mean, certainly in a 24 hour race, you start with about four sets of fresh ovals and you go through them fairly quickly. Wow. Um, <clears throat> and if, you know, the, um, the clever bit is, it's not to get changed after each thing, it's sort of try and carry on in the overall as long as possible. But at the end of the race, when I was told to get back in the car, to try and win it, which wasn't my turn, it was Dana's turn. Uh, I'd already showered and washed my hair and shaved and done everything. I then had to put the oh, sweaty no. pair of wet and overalls and underwear on. Uh, so it was, <laughs> you know, 24 hours was full. You had to be fit. Yeah. Um, it took a lot, of, a lot out of you as a driver. Obviously, you don't drive for 24 hours, you shared it with two other people, but potentially, you, you know, you, you were down to do a minimum of eight hours. And in some of these races, I ended up doing 14 hours, and some of the other drivers did less. So it's just depending on how equal the three of you are to who does what. With, um, with this particular race, I obviously they felt I was faster than Dana and they shut, put me in at the end because they wanted what they call the last bit and you know to be fair they were although we had a discussion and a slightly heated discussion because I was going home to see my <laughs> wife and new daughter yeah they the heated discussion I lost and they won and I had to get <laughs> back in so I was when I did get back in I was pretty motivated let's say quite angry yeah so i was then prepared you know i thought we're in this trying to win let's we're, we're really gonna go for it and you never in back then and today you don't take it easy you, you do drive the cars as fast as you could can go but there's possibly a little bit of more sympathetic sympathetic um nurse on the car mm in the first, second and third part of the race. Well, all of that went out of the window when I got back. There was no sympathy yeah. of what I was doing and with the engine, the gearbox, curves and everything. It was absolutely flat out. Um, but we did catch Eric van der Poel and beat him on the last lap. So in one way, it was worth it. Very hot, gearbox, obviously, there's, no, there's nothing to kill the heat. No from no. coming through so yeah, your gearbox is right there, here isn't it yeah. yeah i mean that's warm now even just after some yeah. some gentle testing today so yeah to think what it was like on a scorching hot august day no um i think we had a bit of air coming from the mirror <laughs> into the car which was you know hot fumy air it wasn't just made you feel better that you had a little pipe yes sticking at you um and what we, about noise? Because again, the other thing we don't have is any sound deadening. It must just be a racket. Well, it, it, it booms yeah. at you inside. So, you know, we used to wear earplugs, but I'm still pretty deaf. Mm. So it's, um, it was noisy, very yeah. hot, quite physical to drive. Mm. Um, not, no power steering, but the steering's heavy. Yeah. Fine for 20 minutes, you know, 30, 40 minutes, but 24 hours in and out tricky yeah it's a good workout so looking at it here then this livery this car clearly a memorable weekend probably a, a weekend that you're never ever going to forget for two very very valid reasons how does it make you feel despite the fact that this is a recreation how does it make you feel seeing it as well as driving it it's, it, it's enjoyable it's nice it's a good feeling it's nice you know when i drive it i don't it, i can't remember what the 92 cars felt like that's too long ago um, it's very very um, identical to the real thing we even in period we used to burn the wings 
Yes. And the, the, the lower you can get the car, the, the faster it goes. Brilliant. And then you start to, the tyre starts to touch the wing on the inside and you know you've gone long, low enough and, and it unfortunately <laughs> burns the wing. And, you know, so we're doing the same in 2024. So yeah. we're trying to get the maximum out of the car, even if it means burning the paint. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. They call it patina, don't they? Yeah. Racing patina. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Steve, thank you so much for showing us around That's the car, right. giving us some of your time. There is a You're podcast welcome. that you can hear as well. Steve okay. and I have just recorded one in a trailer in the back of the car park. So the link to that is below. You can enjoy that as well. We'll hear about that, some of the details of that gruelling race. We're good to see you. I plan on attending at least one of the race events oh, good. this year. So I'll come and see you again. Okay, cool. That's good. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. So we've had a quick chat with Steve. He's shown us the car briefly. But there is another crucial person in this mix, who's the man standing to my right. This is Mr. Toby Partridge of Partridge BMW. Now, Toby, this is partly, this car, your fault, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I'm told. <laughs> yeah. I think, we, I think we did give in and say it was 50-50 between Steve and I while yeah. we got the car. Yeah. So you're racing, driving this car alongside Steve, a car which is obviously yeah. iconic to Steve and his legacy and of course we've been harking on about the 1992 race very briefly what's your race experience up to this point very little this is my third season I've done two seasons um, all Steve's idea <laughs> um, <laughs> but no which has been great in BMWs so one make series 116 is first season 120s and 116 is last year and then um, we were at the Silverstone Classic uh, here. Um, and that was when the conversation came up about building one of these. Um, so yeah, so it feels quite a step up because it is. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely right. And what makes this especially interesting, we've mentioned the fact that this is a recreation, but your dealership, your paint shop has actually been responsible for the livery and the paintwork, which has been quite a task, isn't it? Yeah, the, yeah it, was a, it was a challenge getting it painted. You know, it's a combination of um, Andy Bell, who's the sticker guy, got the stickers, and he's an amazing guy, knows exactly what goes on what car. And then our guy's painting it, so as we said earlier, you know, half of it is paint. And it's, yes. quite a, it's quite a, you know, this is paint, then, it's, then it has to be done to the right place, then you've got the gold stickers across the top. Yeah. So that, that was fairly complicated, but where the guys had the most trouble, not trouble, is that the wrong word? <laughs> Challenge. Challenge, thank you, is, is here. I because see. this is all paint. That's paint. That's paint. That's paint. And then wow. the gold is dropped. And then it, it has to continue. And then, of course, the bumper has to fit. And, uh, you know, I think the guys were very proud. <laughs> 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 so, it, you know, but if you're going to do it properly, you've got to make it yeah. done properly. And, and, you know, we're, well, I'm proud of it. I'm proud that the car, you know, if I'm not the quickest, it's the best looking. Yeah. That's how I think of it. Absolutely. Now, as he's just out of earshot, <laughs> tell me what's. Because Steve's been, it's been your, your guiding arm to this as well. Isn't yeah. it? What's he like as a teacher? He's fascinating because it's it's an amazing insight into a top sports person and how they do things. Yeah. Um, so he goes from one moment it's you're the weak link and you're not quick enough <laughs> to next minute being quite caring about how I get there and how I do it. So your one minute we need the time. Yeah. Which is great. I enjoy the pressure. And the next minute, it's right. Build up to it slowly. Do this now. Do that now. So it's a very interesting mix of very clear targets, no messing around, but actually incredibly supportive. So yeah, you know, as we said earlier off camera, you know, it's a real privilege to be able to do this yeah. with someone like him. Definitely. And the uh, the other crucial dynamic to this, what we haven't yet mentioned in the video, is the fact that yourself and Steve previously have been business partners. Yeah. No longer business partners, but now race partners. How's that dynamic from an office environment, running a dealership, a big dealership like yours, to this dynamic? Is there, <laughs> has it been a happy relationship? Is yeah. it a happy transition? Yeah, I, th I think the, the reality is, is there's honesty. Uh -huh. Yeah, when you're in business together, you've got to be honest with each other and you can't let grit get in the machine. Yeah. You have to do, deal with things as in, you know, as it pops up. And, and Steve's very honest. <laughs> so. And that translates well to here. So like we said earlier today, you know, I, I put a lap time in, thought I was getting close to Steve. He goes out again. <laughs> and he says, well, you don't want me to, you know, not challenge you. So 
Yeah, it's, it's honesty and being clear about what we're trying to achieve. Um, and then that way, there's no clashing. Yeah. So it, it is interesting, but whereas it was in the business side, I generally had the final say with this. <laughs> he really does have Definitely the final say. <laughs> <laughs> I found another very crucial person in this mix. Chris Boardman, not the bicycle builder, but builder of amazing racing cars. Uh, Chris, would it be fair to say you are in a very large way responsible for what we're standing beside now? Uh, I'm a small part of a, a good team that have put together a lovely car for uh, Toby. Uh, obviously, we're, we're very lucky to have Steve also have his input in the build of the, the car um, and drive it as well, which is, is amazing. Perfect. Now, I did ask before, but it'd be good to recap on this. This obviously a, a recreation of that legendary 1992 car. How much from a building point of view would be different? What have you put in that's different on this car versus the car back in the early 90s? Very similar, we're governed by, we build these cars to a set of FIA regulations that mean we can't actually differ too much from the period uh, original car. The electronics perhaps are a little bit newer mm -hmm. so much as the ECUs are newer but in terms of the job that it's doing is the same um, we don't have a radio they were allowed a radio in the race we're not uh, in current historic okay. regulations uh, but other than that it's it's not it's not a lot different from the original car and you mentioned earlier as well there's a significant difference in the way that the car's set up in terms of spring rates these tend to be a bit softer modern day versus stiffer back in the early 90s. Why is that? Yeah, the tyre technology's moved on. The, the, the tyre that you get now is a lot better, more consistent, uh, generally more grip. So with that, the, uh, the general setup nowadays, or you know, a lot of people's theories, the cars are a lot softer than they were perhaps in period. Um, that's kind of a trend that is motorsport over the years. I don't, back in the day, you'd have a really stiff mm. car, which is difficult to drive, especially the curbs, etc. So. Yeah. To make the car handle that bit nicer and, and more neutral and manageable, it's a lot softer than what it was in period, yeah. Perfect. And I guess we should probably talk a little bit about the engine as well. Any big differences in power output or the way that these engines are put together in comparison to the original car? So, no, again, we, we have to get the engine sealed, uh, so they are built to, to the regulation. Uh, the, the only difference, we're not revving as high, so in period okay. they'd be revving to 10.5. Not this car, you know, the Spa race wouldn't be revving to 10.5 for 24 hours. Yeah. Um, that would have been capped. We're at 8.5 now. Um, the life of an engine in the period was a thousand kilometers. And they get a new engine, have a qualifying engine and a race engine. That is different now. We need it to last a bit longer. So in terms of peak power, we're probably back from where they were in period and revs. The revs bring the power. So you can bring the revs down, bring the power down, but it means that you can, go round and round without having to yeah. bring a set of spare pistons with you on the day. <laughs> Superb. And weight-wise, what are we running here? What sort of total weight have we got here? So here we're just under a thousand kilos. Um, that does differ to, again, in the similar vein to the engines being a thousand kilometers. In period, they had parts that were more throwaway, if you like, as in magnesium uprights, yeah. ink now exhausts. Uh, this, the seats were two and a half kilos. Gosh. But now, you know, you, you can move them like an accordion, you wouldn't want to, they wouldn't pass regulations now. Um, so the little bits and pieces back then um, were lighter, so we're just a bit heavier just because you, you don't have access to those parts. I like that. So you, you say still a bit heavy, a little bit heavier, but it's still under a ton. Nine hundred was it nine hundred and forty kilos, something like well, that. Well, the regulation is we could go down to nine forty, but <laughs> that's um, incredible. Yeah, you struggle to get one down there now. I mean, you could run magnesium wheels, for example, but a couple of curb strikes and it's yeah, it's a bit it's an a bit expensive worrying. game, that yes, isn't it? Yeah. Super. Well, I look forward to uh, seeing this compete at one of the rounds, at least one of the rounds this year. I've promised both Steve and Toby that I'll, I'll come along and have a watch because it's going to be great to see in competition. It's amazing watching it practice here. But yeah, seeing it going wheel to wheel with other cars doesn't quite get any better than that, does it? It's great. Thanks very much. Thanks for uh, showing you. us around the car and uh, good luck rest of the year. Thank you very much. Cheers. I've worked out that I was approximately five years old in 1992 when this car, or the original version of this car, was competing and winning at the Spa 24 Hours. And 
I've come to the conclusion that this car and the man that's been driving it today, Mr. Steve Soper, is probably largely responsible for my genuine passion in the BMW mark. Cars like this, driven by men like Steve, had me glued to the television, watching them pass Porsche 911s and Ferraris and winning at endurance races. Cars that I'd seen on the road, cars that occasionally would come home with my dad for a weekend. It's a really special car, and sometimes it's not until you experience cars like this up close that you realize why they're so special and why they mean so much. It's been an absolute pleasure spending a day with this car, even more of a pleasure spending it with Steve and with Toby, who's gonna to be embarking on a race career with this car, hopefully for the next few years. If you would like to see the details of where this car is competing, have a look in our bio below in the description. And I've listed out a few dates this year in 2024, where you can get trackside and see this thing being driven by Steve and by Toby. I will definitely be at least one of those race meetings because I don't want to miss it. For now, I'm gonna say thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, why not drop us a like and hit that subscribe button so you can see the next videos that are coming in the not too distant future. And don't forget, you can see everything that we do at the website, driven.site for written reviews, a backup archive of videos, photos, podcasts, everything we do, it's all there at driven.site. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Look forward to seeing you again soon.